Hello, coffee cuppers. Everyone loves a cool image slider, and within the site designer, it's really easy to implement. Uh, so today, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a revolving photo gallery using the foundation CSS framework. The graphics will rotate automatically, but I'll also show you how to add controls so that your viewer can scroll through them at their own pace. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is um, check the position of our slider. Since it's foundation, it's a mobile first workflow, so that slider needs to be to the left of the very first uh, breakpoint. Now from the content pane, we're going to grab a container element. You can click to add it onto your canvas or you could drag and drop. Over on the style pane, we're going to give it the class name Orbit. Switch over to the element pane and let's give it some data attributes. The first is going to be role and the value is region. The second data attribute is aria label with the value back to school, you could really put anything in that value. And that last attribute is going to be data orbit. With nothing in the value, you can leave that part blank. Next, we're going to nest another container element. If you use the element pane, you can drag and drop those containers so that they are nested inside of each other. You wanna make sure that the orbit is on top with the second container nested inside of it. On the style pane, we're going to give that new container a um, class name of orbit wrapper. This wrapper is going to hold all of the contents of our um, orbit slider. We're gonna repeat that nesting one more time with another container um, element. This is going to be uh, nested as well with the class name orbit controls. With that basic structure in place, let's go ahead and add a list container element to the canvas. If it does drop into the wrong spot, over on that element pane, drag and drop it so that it is nested within the orbit wrapper container. The list container element will get a class name of orbit container. Now that specific element by default includes uh, three list item containers. Uh, you can easily change that in the selected element properties if you needed more or less. Um, three is a pretty good default so that you can get started. Now each one of those list item containers, those are going to hold our actual picture elements. So over on the content pane, let's grab a picture element and drag and drop it into one of the list item containers. Again, I like to drag and drop from the element pane itself because I just find it much easier um, that's just a personal choice though. So the list item containers will get the class name of orbit slide and the picture element itself will get the class name of orbit image. And we're going to repeat this process for all three.
a little trick of mine for the picture is using the duplicate button and uh, duplicating it two extra times and then just dragging those picture elements into, um, into those list item containers. You'll notice once you add the class name to the list item container, the item disappears. This makes it hidden um, so that you don't have all of your pictures showing at the exact same time. For a short little recap, um, you can see the, um, the structure of our elements in the tree here. Um, you can see how everything is nested within the main orbit container. You've got the orbit wrapper, the controls, um, and then the actual slides themselves. Next up, it's time to add our actual picture resources. Um, if you select um, any of the picture elements and go down to the properties under the element pane, you can use that drop down to change out the placeholder. When the pop-up screen appears, um, you can add your images or even sort them into special folders. Personally, I like to keep everything organized. So I'm going to add a folder called Orbit Images and select Add Images or Folder and choose um, all three images I'm going to use for my slider. With the resources in place, grab one of the images and be sure to change out that alt text placeholder. Um, in this case, I'm going to change it to Apple. Clicking on the little eyeball on the side um, will bring the hidden item into view so you can see it and style it. So let's go ahead and show all of these items so we can put in their place, their picture resource. Rinse and repeat here like we did the first slide and change them out with the um, with the proper image. With all three um, pictures in place, we can see that those images are pretty small here. Um, this is where you can get creative and style how you want the, um, the orbit to actually appear. Since they all share the same class name, that orbit slide, you only have to um, make changes to them once and it'll apply to them all. So under the style pane layout section, I'm going to change the dimensions to a max width of none. This way those images stretch the full width of the screen. If we grab that slider, you can see how it grows and shrinks um, depending on the viewport. And your customizations here could, could be um, really anything. If you want to adjust um, the max height, if you want to keep it at a certain um, you know, dimensions, that's where you would make those changes. Now, if we go ahead and hide those extra images, we can go ahead and um, make our final class name. Using the canvas, I'm going to select the list item container for that first image. You could also do that on the element pane, but I'm trying to show you the different, different controls. And we're gonna give a second class name of is active. That's um, indicating the first slide. Now we're ready to hit that preview button and we can test it out right on the canvas in the app. Now, as you can see, the slides do change. Um, though very, very slowly. Um, that's where having those control indicators, the previous and next, um, can really be helpful for the user. So on the canvas, if we select that top um, container, the orbit controls container, we can add those extra buttons. 
So on the content pane, I'm going to use the button element. Click and click to add it to the canvas. Hovering over the button, I'm going to click the little A icon that will activate um, the editing feature. And I'm going to replace the, um, the action placeholder text with a um, less than symbol. I'm going to hover over and select the duplicate button so that a second button will appear and I'm going to change that to the greater than symbol. To get these buttons into place, all we need to do is add um, a class name to each one of them. The first one will get the class name Orbit Previous, while the second button will get the class name uh, Orbit Next. You'll notice as these class names are being entered, uh, the framework automatically places the buttons into the correct position right over the um, images. You can style those hover buttons however you like. Uh, I'm just gonna leave them as the default though for now. And we're ready to preview that in our browser. And here you go, folks. You've got an, Im an image slider um, with user controls. Now, quick bonus round. I'm going to show you how to save um, an item to your component library. If you're just grabbing this project from the, um, the article, or you can use this, um, or you can use this with any component that you make uh, within the app. This way you can reuse them at a later time. On the element pane, be sure that you're selecting the parent container, the parent item for um, the object you wanna save. In this case, it would be the container with the orbit class name. With that selected, on the content pane, you'll select components and click the button Create Component from Selection. You'll see an, uh, a preview image appear and you'll be able to add in um, custom text to be able to identify um, the component you've created. So in this case, I'm gonna name it Orbit Photo Gallery and give it just a short description so that I remember exactly what um, the item does. To add it to your, can, uh, to your library, click Export to Library or the little up arrow. You can add it to an existing category or you can even create a new category. Um, this way common um, objects um, are saved together in a, in a nice grouped fashion. With the component saved, anytime you wanna reuse the component in this project or the next, you would just click on the component library at the top, find the item you want and click on add to project. As a quick demonstration, um, if I added a blank page to this specific project and wanted to add the gallery to it as well, on the components, I would just choose the insert into canvas or click on that plus arrow to pop it into the page. Saves you from having to rebuild the same items uh, multiple times. Pretty handy. Thanks for joining me today. Happy site designing.